Alright guys, in this video we're going to talk about how to practice lucid dreaming and what techniques and things you need to actually practice on a daily basis in order to have regular natural lucid dreams. So this is a bit different to my normal videos in the sense that this is more what you can do every single day. This isn't like a specific technique, this is um, I guess you could say habits to build, things that you should practice every day. This is for anybody who wants to lucid dream reliably and regularly. So even if you're going to watch another video, even if you're going to do something else, just this is the most important video I've probably ever made for this channel for howtolucid.com. And so hit, let's just get right into it. So the first thing you need to practice every single day is you need to write your dreams down in the morning. I know this sounds basic and I know that you're probably thinking I already know this. I'm going to get into some other ones which you probably didn't know. But so the first one is every single morning you write your dreams down in a journal. I do actually have a custom lucid dreaming journal which I'll show you now. So I just wanted to quickly mention my custom lucid dreaming journal that I had designed because this actually contains detailed instructions about how to use the journal. It also contains specific places for you to draw your dreams on one side and then write about them on the other side. It also it gives you the chance to write whether you were lucid, which technique you used, the date, and also a title of the dream, so that when you're flicking through at speed, you can quickly see which dreams you had. You'll also find beautiful lucid dreaming quotes about every 10 pages, just to keep you inspired and motivated as you go through this journal. And then at the back, there's also a section explaining how to lucid dream, and also various reality checks and things you can use to help you along the journey. So if you want to get this, go to howtolucid.com forward slash lucid journal, all one word. Okay, back to the video. Uh, but you don't have to use that. You can use um, you know, a notepad or even just notes on your phone. What I actually do is I use notes on my phone um, because then I can transfer it to the computer and I can search through it later for things like dream signs and uh, all of that exciting stuff. All right, so number two is you need to be doing reality checks every single day, about 30 to 40 times a day. But if you can't manage with that, at least try at least do it for 10 times a day, okay? So a reality check is where you test whether you are dreaming or not. It's where you test whether you are awake or whether you're dreaming. And here's a very quick reality check you can do. Just hold out your hand like this and try and push this finger through the palm of this hand. What you'll notice is that you'll always feel the same uh, resistance. It will always feel the same. It will feel like you can't push through your finger through your palm because of course you can't in normal waking life if you do it in the dream then the finger will go right through your hand and you'll be able to confirm that you're dreaming this is a basic reality check but it's a really effective one it's actually the one that i use as well you could also use something like a dream totem um, and i'll show you a very quick totem that you can use now I just wanted to say really quickly, a powerful way of remembering to do reality checks and also just making sure they show up in your dreams is to use a totem. So this is actually a beautifully designed talisman coin that says various things on it. It says, are you awake? Are you dreaming? So if you want to get this, you can go to howtolucid.com forward slash coin and you'll be able to get this beautiful lucid talisman. Okay, back with the video. Uh, but as I said, you, you don't have to use that. You can just use your reality checks involving your body you know for example pinching your nose trying to breathe you could push your finger through your palm you could try uh, you know looking at your hands to see if something seems strange and uh, also just one thing that I want to mention very briefly uh, I got some comments um, I guess in the last week or in the last month or so asking if I could use uh, tattoos tattoos as a reality check now as you've probably seen I do have many tattoos uh, however I don't use them as reality checks and the reason for that is that you often, especially if you have tattoos for a while, you get very used to the idea of them being on your skin. They become part of your skin. And so you don't really notice anything strange when you look down in a dream. I mean, I might see my tattoos in a dream. Sometimes they're not there, which is weird. But it's never an easy way of, be, of reality checking because you're so used to them that you don't notice anything is strange. However, if you get a new tattoo, then within that first month when you're getting used to it being on your body, that's when you can start using it to reality check. That's when it might show up in your dreams and you think, oh, I've just got that tattoo, so this is new, you know, I must be dreaming. But for the most part, no, I do not use uh, tattoos as reality checks because it, it's just not that effective. It doesn't work that well. All right, so going back into it, number three is you need to be trying various techniques. I've said this many times before, but just try different techniques out and see which one resonates with you. Every single person is going to have different varying degrees of luck with different techniques so maybe the wake back to bed works well for you maybe it works well for others or maybe the wild doesn't work so well for you just you need to sort of find which one works best for you and which one is going to give you the results that you're after so number four this is a i guess like a, a daily habit that you should build up and that is to do a reality check the first thing you do when you wake up first thing in the morning the reason for that is that 
there's something called false awakenings. When you have a false awakening, it's when you have a dream about waking up, it feels very vivid, very real, and if you don't do a reality check first thing, you can get stuck in what's called false awakening loops, which is where you keep on having the same experience. You wake up, or at least you think you've woken up, and then you you go about your day, you do your morning routine, you maybe even commute to work, and then you're suddenly snapped back to being woken up again. And suddenly you think, hold on a second, so none of that was real? And it can be confusing, it can be difficult to know when you've actually woken up, and it can be disorientating, annoying. However, if you do a reality check first thing every time you wake up, then you will never have a false awakening because you will always have a lucid dream or at least that's a theory. It's worked very well for me, and I know a few other people it's worked well for as well. So first thing you do, do a reality check. Number five. Number five is, I guess, a way of practicing lucid dreaming, but it's more of using triggers to do reality checks. So here, here's how it works. Every single time you see something strange, unusual, or slightly weird, slightly different to what you normally experience in waking life, use that as a reminder to do a reality check. So let's say, for example, you're walking down the road and some weird mascot comes up to you, or there's a weird noise and you can't work out where the noise is coming from, or something strange happens. That is exactly the moment when you should do a reality check, because it's the strange things that often we dream about that night. So if you can attach a reality check to those memories, to those strange experiences, you're much more likely to lucid dream. And number six, which I feel is the most important, and especially if you've stayed on this far in the, in the video or in the podcast or whatever, um, this is, I guess, the most important thing that I want to share with you this year for this channel and for going forward. Number six is to practice lucid living. So not just lucid dreaming, but actually being aware of what you're doing throughout the entire day, not just in your dreams. Here's a few ways of practicing lucid living. Firstly, just be more conscious and aware of what you're actually doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Where do you spend your time every single day? Like for example, do you, I don't know, maybe you watch Netflix for five hours a day? Maybe you browse social media for two hours a day? Maybe you, I don't know, whatever the case may be, you, the chances are that you're spending your time in ways that if you really broke it down and thought about it carefully, you wouldn't want to spend your time doing those things. But what happens is we end up just going into routines, autopilot mode, and we do these things without really considering like, do these fit in with my long-term goal and my long-term vision of what I want my life to be? In many cases, the things we're doing every day, you know, watching Netflix or browsing social media, they're not really things that will get us to our long-term happiness and our long-term goal. It might give you a bit of instant gratification, meaning you scroll through social media, you see a few funny memes or pictures, whatever, um, and it's, it feels fun and good in the moment. But if you compound that over, say, five years, 10 years, 20 years, the effect that that has is you end up just wasting your time. Like, you don't achieve the things that you want to do in 20 years' time. And it's hard to think about it now because you're so focused on right now, I just want to scroll through this meme or right now, I just want to finish this series on Netflix. But in 20 years time, you won't care about that series on Netflix, but you will care about the lost time, the lost opportunities. And if you compare, you know, two, two different paths that you could take, one path, you could watch Netflix five hours a day. The other path you focus maybe, let's say two or three hours a day on self-improvement and growth or growing your business or whatever it is, getting stronger, exercising, learning things. And then you do two hours of Netflix. The difference that has is enormous because at the end of the, at the, end of the journey, you know, in five years or 10 years time, you will have done so much more than if you had just watched Netflix and, and done nothing to work on yourself. So it's, it's about lucid living and being conscious of the choices you're making every single day. The other element of that, and this is something that's going to probably be very polarising and it's going to divide many people, um, I'm sure there'll be an arguments uh, thread in the comments section below, but that is to be conscious about the way you're treating your body and the way you're treating your mind, your soul, your spirit, whatever you want to call all of that stuff going on, um, the way you're treating that. And so I'm, what I mean by that is, are you getting enough sleep, eight to nine hours a day of high quality sleep? Are you exercising every day for 30 minutes or more? And that can be doing things like yoga, you could take a walk, you could uh, do some push-ups, whatever it is. And are you eating the right foods? Are you eating a whole foods plant-based diet? Now, I don't want to say vegan because the, veg the word vegan has so many negative connotations. I feel like, in this, in, especially with, amongst young people, they just feel like it's a, an extremist way of living. What I would say is that studies 
time and time again have shown that a plant-based diet with whole foods is by far the best diet in terms of health benefits, uh, in terms of the environment, in terms of sustainability, and also if you care about animals, it's also a way of avoiding all of the animal cruelty. Um, as some of you will have guessed, I am now vegan. Uh, I have been plant-based for a while now, and I feel like it's the best way to go, and I've been seeing some incredible benefits since I went, even just since I went vegetarian, uh, you know, several years ago, but also since I've went completely vegan, I have seen incredible benefits in both energy, strength, and also things like sleep and dreams as well. So I'm not gonna spend too long talking about this, but I would just advise you to and by the way, if you are interested in that, and if you want to hear a detailed explanation with logical reasons, explaining exactly why and how the vegan and plant-based diet is the best and how, how it affects your body chemistry, your brain chemistry, and the way your whole system operates, I do have a very long video on my other channel, which I'll link in the description. It's just Transcend Your Limits. Uh, it's about 25 minutes. I go very into detail logically, and I convince in a very calm way uh, exactly how and why it works. So that's one part of it. Another part of lucid living is just being conscious and aware and being aware of kindness to others and what you're doing on this planet, your purpose, okay, your mission, you know, whatever you would label that as and just fulfilling that. Raising your vibrations, raising your consciousness and just becoming a more aware, sentient, high energy, high vibration human being uh, because ultimately that's what we're here to do. We're here to raise the vibrations of the planet and ourselves and also share and spread that positive energy, love, unconditional love. Uh, there are many different terms for what I'm talking about here, but hopefully you can understand what I'm saying. By the way, if you have been following along with my social media channels, you will have noticed that I do post roughly every day. I try and post every day on every single channel, including TikTok, Instagram, whatever. So just search for How To Lucid. I do have a podcast as well, which you can find on Spotify now. It's even on SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, if you have watched this far and you're one of my, I guess, loyal fans and you watch all of my videos all the way through, please make sure you're subscribed or you're following all of my social media profiles, or at least as many of them as you can, because I'm going to be doing monthly giveaways where I select someone at random, um, but obviously the more you comment and interact with my channels and whatever, the more likely I'm going to notice you or the more likely I'm going to scroll through and you're going to appear there in uh, you know recent comments or whatever. So I'm going to pick a random person every month to get a lucid dreaming product or a coaching call from me completely for free, uh, just as a way of saying thank you for you know interacting with my social media profiles and uh, channels and all of that stuff. So yes, if you would like to be entered into that, if you'd like to have a chance, just make sure you're following as many of them as you can. Don't worry too much if you, you know, don't have Twitter or don't whatever. Just search on whatever platforms you do use for How To Lucid and look for my either my face or the logo with, you know, the black, white and grey logo with the eye. By the way, for those of you who uh, are still here, <laughs> uh, I thought I'd explain my logo. So the lo the, what the reason that I chose that logo and designed it in that way is actually, if you look at the logo, the, uh, the eye, so it's obviously to represent awareness and, and consciousness within dreams, hence the eye being open, but the two sides of the eye uh, form sort of a yin yang uh, symbol, which I believe is like representing balance in the universe, unity and all of that stuff. But they are also uh, synapses, they're neurons. So it's uh, a clever way of sort of reminding you that lucid dreaming happens within the brain and uh, within the neurochemical network that is within our brain, which is such, such an incredible thing, such an unbelievably complicated piece of machinery and uh, we still know so little about it and how it works. So that's a reminder to me, that's why that logo is designed the way that it has been. Anyway, leave a comment letting me know what you think of this technique and I'll see you next time.